already done. Computer, prepare your Wi-Fi transportation web browser. Transport Denu C. Guzman to home location. Gee, what a ride. Hey there, Daniel. Josh! How did I get here? Well, it's a bit complicated. Um, let's just say that I installed an internet teleporter to my laptop and transported you here to my place. Okay, but what? Well, it's just... We need to have a little talk. You see, I've been feeling a tad under the weather since I've made my top 13 film that I hate, that you requested me to do. And you haven't blogged anything since then? Well, I did manage to blog The Tale of Deathborough recently, and while that was a decent movie, it hasn't made me feel any better. Okay, but what else do you like besides Desperate? Well... Aside from Kingdom Hearts, which I'm excited about getting the third game in my mailbox next month, there's the Swan Princess, though that's getting another continuation next year. Um, anything by Tim Burton, though his version of Dumbo does not start until three more months. Pokemon, Star Wars, My Little Pony, Wizard of Oz, Batman, Wreck-It Ralph. Well, Ralph did have a new movie recently. Did you see it in the theaters? Well, yeah, I mean, three times to be exact. Um, uh, first time being in 3D. Why? Well, since we've looked at Ralph's first movie together, why don't we do his sequel? Hmm. You know, that's actually not a bad idea. Computer, cue the logo. Hey everyone, I'm Joshua Oral, the Mustang Prince, and welcome to Mustang Prince Oral Reports. Joining me once again is my good friend and YouTube pooper, Daniel Guzman. Hello again, everyone. So, you may remember about five months ago, we looked at Disney's Wreck-It Ralph, and we still stand by that it's one of the best animated Disney films from the 2010s. Plus, it's a great film for folks who love video games or open worlds. You may also remember that after our blog, we asked ourselves if we would ever blog Ralph's recent sequel. Well, folks, that moment has finally come. So, released on November 21st, 2018, the movie is Ralph Breaks the Internet. So, let's get started. Taking place six years after the first movie, video game villain Wreck-It Ralph and fellow misfit Princess Vanellope Von Schweetz must risk it all by traveling to the World Wide Web in search of a replacement part to save Vanellope's video game Sugar Rush. In way over their heads, Ralph and Vanellope rely on the citizens of the internet known as the netizens to help navigate their way including an entrepreneur named Yes, who is the head algorithm of trend-making site BuzzTube, and Shank, a tough-as-nails driver from a gritty online auto racing game called Flutter Race. So, what are our thoughts on the movie? Well, this was equally as amazing as the first film, and I consider it to be the best Disney sequel I've seen in years. Plus, it's one of the sequels worth waiting for. But to further explain why we enjoy the movie, let's move on to Mustang Notes. Now, this movie marks the fifth time Disney would release a sequel to the Disney animated canon in-house. The previous being The Three Caballeros, The Rescuers Down Under, Fantasia 2000, 
and the 2011 Winnie the Pooh movie. When he spoke about a sequel back in 2013, director Rich Moore said he wanted to try and work in mobile casual gaming, and he also liked the idea of bringing in different Wreck-It Ralphs for mobile versions or Super Smash Brothers iterations of the character. He also stated that the cast and crew are open to the sequel and plans to include Mario and Tron. In the end, only the latter was used in the beginning of the film as a minor foreshadowing plot device. Serious talks about a Wreck-It Ralph sequel began in 2014. Henry Jackman was the first to leak information saying that the sequel's story was being written. There is a general consensus that a sequel wouldn't be made unless there was a good story. Part of the inspiration for doing a sequel came from Ralph's final line in the first movie. Turns out that Ralph doesn't need a medal to tell him that he's a good guy. But if Vanellope likes him, how bad could he be? According to Rich Moore and Phil Johnson, the more they thought about that particular line, the more dysfunctional it seemed. It gave the impression that Ralph's self-esteem is solely dependent on how Vanellope feels about him, meaning that he still has insecurities to overcome and room to grow as a character. This prompted the filmmakers to, well, like the first film, have Ralph and Vanellope's relationship serve as the center of the story. That's when Rich Moore came up with the idea of having the characters travel to the internet. This created numerous opportunities for comedy and conflict between Ralph and Vanellope, which excited the creative team. The story went through a number of revisions. In the beginning, the internet was essentially the antagonist of the film. It was regarded as a threat to the arcade's way of life, a threat that Ralph ought to wreck. In another version, Vanellope was sucked into the internet and became the leader of her own website, Vanellope.com. Another idea had Ralph becoming an internet sensation corrupted by fame and fortune. Now let's talk about the animation, and in our opinion, like the first film, the animation is equally as great. Plus, the way the world of the internet looks is very creative. You see, the internet is a massive digital metropolis functioning kind of like New York City, Tokyo, Los Angeles, or London. Each building and stand-in in the digital city like World is a website. They are divided into various districts that share a common element such as social media, shopping, financing, and each building contains its own virtual world. Also, the population of the internet is divided into two groups, the netizens and the net users. The netizens are the permanent residents of the internet or digital personifications of the internet's functions, websites, and apps. And the block-headed net users are avatars of the real-life people using the internet, serving as the consumer populace of the metropolis. There are many websites that you may know in this film, like Wikipedia, Snapchat, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Google, MySpace, Pinterest, National Geographic, IMDb, Amazon, Rise and Shine In, Tumblr, Instagram, Fandango, and many more. Now let's talk about the websites that Ralph and Vanellope go to during their visit. First, there's eBay. An online bargain website that takes the form of an auctioning convention. There's Slaughter Race, which is an online racing game known for being dangerous and intense and its atmosphere looks like a mix of Mad Max, Fast and Furious, and Grand Theft Auto. In fact, 
it's almost reminiscent to the copper key track from Ready Player One. BuzzTube, which is a video sharing website powered by Yes. However, we think it could be a mix of BuzzFeed and YouTube. The Dark Web, which is a grungy CD place located in the depth below the internet, where websites end up once they become defunct. And there's Oh My Disney, a D23 Expo-like website inhabited by netizen versions of characters from Disney Animation, Lucasfilm, Pixar, Marvel, The Muppets, and many more. It's also a popular tourist destination for net users. As for the story, well, Ralph and Vanellope improve on their friendship relationship throughout the movie, and we think the writers did very well, and the ending was very emotional, to say the least. Also, what makes this film great is that it doesn't have a main villain. Well, not in the way you'd expect, but more of a hazard, shall we say. However, there are a few flaws in this movie. Firstly, several of the characters from Lit Wax Arcade don't have a big role in this. The title of the movie doesn't show up until the end credits, and, well, there, there was no animated short made by Disney Animation preceding the movie. And another thing, the film almost got away with a crude joke. Now, let's talk about a few of our favorite scenes. My favorite scenes in this film is when Van Helby races against Shane, and the part where Ralph and Van Helby fight off against the Wreck-It Ralph virus, which forms into one giant Ralph. As for mine, well, my favorite scenes are when Ralph and Vanellope race in the Tron game, which kind of had a little bit of a defunct there, and, well, when Ralph does his own BuzzTube videos. What's more, this whole movie is making me excited for Kingdom Hearts 3 next month. Plus, the scene in Oh My Disney was really amazing, seeing characters like Dumbo, Mickey Mouse, Buzz Lightyear, Baymax, Groot, the Stormtroopers, who are, well, representing Internet Police, the late Stan Lee in the form of a net user, R2-D2, Iron Man, Nick Wilde, Ranger Woodlore, and Humphrey the Bear, Grumpy, Hey Hey, Peter Pan Shadow, Tinkerbell, C-3PO, and of course, the Disney princesses, from Snow White all the way up to Moana. In fact, believe it or not, their dressing room is very reminiscent to the Disneyland Dream Suite. Also to us, the way of their CGI restyling looks impressive compared to their hand-drawn counterparts. Plus, the way Anna, Elsa, Moana, Merida, and Rapunzel look equally as great, too. Plus, during the scene when they rescue Ralph at the end of the film, we hear instrumental versions of their songs blending with each other. Plus, their comfy outfits make them look very modern. And believe it or not, this is not the first time we've seen them transfer from paper to pixels. Remember their cameos in the Sophia the First TV show? Also, I feel as if the writers may have seen my top 11 other Disney princesses list that I made back in 2015 where Vanellope made it to number 5 on the list. Now, let's talk about the music. Now, aside from the song Zero, 
which is kind of forgettable compared to When Can I See You Again from the first movie. The song that sticks out the most to us is Vanellope's song in this place called Slaughter Race. Now, thanks to her inspiration from the Disney princesses, in this song, Vanellope sings about her desire to live in Slaughter Race, which gives her this unique sense of freedom. Plus, the way Shank and her gang join in makes this song feel like a Broadway musical. Special thanks to Alan Menken for composing this song. Also, there's one other song in this film which is shown after the end credits. But, <laughs> if you guys have seen any of my YouTube poop videos, then you'll know exactly what it is. Now let's move on to the characters and the voice actors who brought him to life. Wreck-It Ralph is once again voiced by John C. Riley, who got to be in, in Kong Skull Island, Serp du Freak, and Illumination Sing. Ralph's role is similar, but different from the first film. Yeah, he can be selfish and stubborn, especially when he finds out that Van Nelby wants to live in Slaughter Race. However, aside from his BuzzTube videos, the part that we found that we liked is when Ralph makes a new road in Sugar Rush, which causes Vanellope to go off course, resulting in breaking the game's steering wheel. Ralph's best friend, Princess Vanellope von Schweetz, is again voiced by comedian Sarah Silverman. Now, Vanellope's role in this film makes her more of a main character than a sidekick. Plus, she is still very adorable and funny, and very childish. Plus, I like that she volunteers to help promote Ralph's BuzzTube videos as a pop-up ad user. Also, her interaction with the Disney princesses and her song number makes me want to consider her as part of the Disney Princess franchise. Now, let's move on to the new characters, starting with Shane, a slaughter race racer voiced by the current Wonder Woman, Gal Gadot. To us, Shank is very hardcore and a very tough driver. Plus, Gal Gadot's voice as Shank feels very reminiscent to her performances in the Fast and Furious films. Also, Shank is, well, fun, warm, and wise. She values her crew greatly and sees them as a family. While her scripted dialogue can come off as menacing, Shank is, well, in truth, rather soft-spoken. Also, she treats Vanellope like a little sister. Our next character, Yes, seriously, that's her name, with three S's, is voiced by Taraji P. Henson, who has been in The Avengers of Rocky and Bullwinkle and the 2010 remake of The Karate Kid. Yes, is an algorithm that determines the trending videos on BuzzTube. Her character is modeled after Cruella DeVille from 101 Dalmatians, as both characters are seen as fashionable. In our opinion, Yes acts kind of like a Hollywood agent, and she's very supportive when she helps Ralph create new BuzzTube videos, as well as sending out her pop-up netizens to other websites in order to promote Ralph. Also, she advises Ralph to not read the comments. Remember this lesson, folks. We also have Knows More, voiced by Disney good luck charm Alan Tudyuk. This character represents the search engine Knows More, 
with an over-aggressive autofill. To us, Tunic seems to be doing a Bill Thompson impersonation while voicing this character. Also, while Nosemore's body is computer-generated, his glasses and eyes are hand-drawn using Disney Mender, which is pretty interesting in our opinion. Next up is J.P. Spamley, a clickbait pop-up ad user voiced by Bill Hader. Best known for Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs and Inside Out. While it is disappointing that Hader isn't credited in this film, Spanley can be obnoxious and shifty at first, but he is a genuinely friendly netizen who is just doing his job. Spanley can also be sympathetic with Ralph when he admits that he's afraid of losing Penelope. While his actions are pretty questionable, he is a nice and sometimes helpful person. Also, his assistant Gord, despite his habit of popping up out of nowhere, is a very mysterious, loyal, and helpful character. Finally, we have Gord's cousin, Double Dan, voiced by La Sombra slash Doc Ock himself, Alfred Molina. This guy is a virus creator who inhabits the dark web. To us, this guy seems like an internet version of Jabba the Hutt. Plus, he's very untrusting and very ruthless. However, he does show some level of professionalism towards his customers. But, all the while, he's very sensitive when someone looks at his brother, Little Dan, who is attached to his neck. Anyway, what Dan does in this movie is introduce Ralph to an insecurity virus named Arthur. And now, let's move on to our final words. Overall, Ralph Breaks the Internet is an excellent Disney sequel to come from the House of Mouse. The world of the internet is amazing. The websites that Ralph and Vanellope visit are cool. The new characters are very memorable. The cameos that appear in the Oh My Disney website are awesome. Plus the story does great on improving a friendship relationship. The film... While we didn't have to wait as long as some of the other Disney sequels that were theatrically released, it's still worth watching and worth the wait. As for Vanellope as the main character, well, she was very wonderful. And of course, we think she makes a great new addition to the Disney Princess lineup, and she's made history as the first video game Disney Princess. Unless you want to count Kyrie. But anyway, together, we give this film a full 100%. Yeah, there were a few flaws, but the rest of the movie made up for it. Well, that's all for now. I'd like to thank Daniel for joining me today. And this really made me feel better after many weeks. Not a problem, Joshua. It's been a pleasure working with you again. So, uh, one question. How do you plan to send me back to my place? Oh, that's pretty simple. All I do is just press my enter button on my keyboard, and you should be home in no time. Very well. See you next time. Well, that about does it. <clears throat> anyway, folks, be sure to tune in again next time, because... I think it's about time to go back to Christmas again, starting with a subject that I talked about last year, Mustang Power. <laughs>